Well, uh, a chief of uh, some a hospital in the United States has shared this, it's... I think it's on the social media. Young people are having COVID parties. Here the challenge is, let us see who will get infected today, okay? They're meeting for a party and having whatever they have. And the challenge is, let's see who will get infected. So a thirty-year-old young man died about four days ago and his last words were, I thought this whole thing is a fake, but now I know it's for real. But too late, he passed away, thirty-year-old. So it's very important to understand this is for real, uncertainty is for real, uncertainty is... uncertainty is always real but it's coming home to everybody's minds now that tomorrow how you and me will live, it is a question mark. How our economic status will be, where you will be, what you will do, all these things question marks. I'm not trying to paint a bleak picture. All I'm telling you is, if you stay alive, it's still good. See, just look back and see. Hundred years ago, why hundred years ago? Twenty-five years ago, none of us had a cell phone, very few of us had a television. Everything that we have today was probably at fifty percent of what we have today. If you go back one hundred years, <laughs> probably what we had at that time, people what they had at that time was ten, fifteen percent of what we have today. If you go back a thousand years, well, you can't talk percentages, it was minimalistic. Even if you go back ten thousand years, even when people lived in caves, they knew about the uncertainty of life. Every day was a struggle for food and everything. Today you struggle, though everything is assured, that's a different matter. That is because uh, both... both your uh, brains in your gut and up there, both are out of control. But even then, those who were happy were happy. Half-naked men and women living in caves, they also had fun. Once their stomach was full, they were happy. They sang their own songs, they danced their own dances. They lived well, I'm saying, for what was there. So whether we live well or not is not essentially dependent upon the arrangements. Our arrangements may shrink. One thing, as I've been repeatedly saying, that every nation should take care of, and India has a crucial role in this, is we must ensure substantial food is produced. Whether people have money to buy it or not, it doesn't matter. If there is substantial food on the planet, we can see that nobody starves. As long as there is no starvation, reorganization of our lives, reorganization of our economies, reorganization of our social structures, all this, you must be able to go through it as a a challenging exercise of our lives. Only when our life is threatened, either due to lack of food or something else, that is a different kind of challenge. Because you are here now, this is our time on the planet. What we make out of it is entirely ours. Definitely you know, even twenty-five or fifty years ago, forget about the wars and famines and horrible things that happened. Even in normal conditions, their life compared to how our lives are organized today were not even ten, twenty percent of what it is today. But still they lived well. I know twenty-five, fifty years ago we lived well, 